the Prestige M8 is a stunning vessel. It's a lifestyle statement, embodying luxury, performance, and a joy of the open sea. If you're looking to elevate your boating experience to unprecedented levels, this, the M8, could be the best thing to happen since powered catamarans first came on the scene. But does it pack enough on board? Come with me and let's find out. The first thing you'll notice about the M8 are the proportions. It is a big boat with plenty of open space on board. This is the terrace. This is the first thing I noticed when it was sitting at the dock. And you can see the space on board here. Now the furniture they've got in place, you can choose from a catalog of different styles of furniture, or you can have this place completely empty and choose your own. But it's the freedom of movement that I think really epitomizes this design. It's everywhere on board in every single space. Being a catamaran that they have designed from the ground up, a powered catamaran, it's given them a lot of freedom in terms of placement of certain items on board and the design overall. And this single level living, which extends from the terrace through into this saloon, is a sign of that. Again, there's ample space here. You can have this layout with the kitchen or galley located where it is on this boat, or also running along here on the starboard side, giving you a nice choice between two designs. But in terms of the area, you've got usable space here. Sitting area down here, two seats located in the back corner, or a large dining table up forward. The crowning glory for any owner is certainly going to be this master stateroom. It's impeccably designed, has ample head height throughout, and a full walk around king size bed. That's impressive. There's also a separate toilet and shower located on the port side. This is what you would call apartment living. I'm standing here in the VIP room. This is located on the starboard side of the boat. It's got a bed and a seating area located just over there. On the port side, there's twin rooms. You can elect to have four rooms, which converts the seating area from this VIP room into another bedroom, giving you plenty of accommodation for guests. There is so much usable space on board this boat, particularly up here on the flybridge. This is the place where I think most people will do their entertaining. There is so much room here, you can leave it entirely open or you can have floating furniture like you see here today, which you choose from a catalogue provided by the manufacturer. Behind me, you've got a wet bar, a sun pad over to my left, and behind me, you'll notice that the sunroof actually retracts letting in ample light, or you can close it if you need a little bit of shade. You've got two walkways, one over there on the port side and one forward on the starboard side. That's unusual for a boat like this, but it means that you're not constantly walking back and forth. You can actually access all of the areas very simply indeed. The primary steering position is located up on the flybridge amidships. You've got two very comfortable seats up here. Importantly, you've got plenty of screen space, so you can keep on top of all of the measurements you need to be across, particularly if you're doing long range cruising. I do love the fact that there is an overhead 360 degree view, giving you safety and security while you're docking, no matter where you take this boat in the world. Importantly, particularly for Australian conditions, you can enclose this space with optional clears. The standard helm station on the flybridge is comfortable. Everything is within reach. It offers a clear view ahead and out to the sides. However, visibility to the M8's rear necessitates the use of cameras. If you are more comfortable at the rear of the boat, closer to the action when docking, there is a docking station. A complete lower helm is also available. It is an optional extra and would be indispensable in Australia for overnight passages between islands on the barrier reef or simply up and down the coast. 
In terms of using the entire space on board, you'll notice that I'm sitting in a beautiful little sunken lounge located at the bow of the M8. This use of space and the comfort level that they've actually applied here is incredible. The perfect place to sit down, enjoy the sunset and have a sip of a drink. Hidden in the port side of the saloon is a day head, which means that guests can duck off for a refresh without going downstairs and traipsing water throughout the boat. The M8 is powered by twin Volvo Penta D8 600 horsepower engines connected to a V-drive shaft. This boat is incredibly efficient and with its focus on cruising, the Volvo engines provide dependable performance. It is not a boat engineered for speed. The average cruising speed hovering around 15 knots with a top speed of 20 knots. The hull glides through the water and exhibits a consistent comfort all the way through offering a sense of dependability owing to its wide hulls. Tracking and maintaining heading require minimal steering input, while a level feel is maintained at all speeds. Even during turns, the boat remains remarkably stable and flat, which is very comforting for those on board. Cruising at around 15 knots, the test recorded roughly 2,500 RPM. We are unable to get fuel readings on this test. To optimize hull performance, and achieve a range exceeding 1,000 nautical miles, a more leisurely pace of around eight knots is recommended. At this speed, relaxation becomes your sole pursuit. In the tranquil waters of Porto Piccolo, the boat gracefully handled the minimal challenges presented. It was almost a glass out, but it did slice through wake waves with comfort and dependability. The Prestige M8 is certainly a statement piece, capturing the essence of distinction and sophistication. What they've done on board is maximise every available space with this new design. If you're looking for a long range cruising boat, this is the perfect boat for you. It's going to take your boating to new levels.